Well, yesterday marked day two of testimony from closely guarded witness. His name was Miguel Martinez. We're talking about the El Chapo trial, of course. Martinez testified to the amount of wealth El Chapo gained from being the head of the Sinaloa cartel, including four jets he owned. Here are some images of just two of those jets right there. Martinez also mentioned how El Chapo liked to wiretap people as a form of control. The judge also asked the prosecution to speed up their line of questioning, to which the prosecution said this is their last lengthy witness. So joining us now is criminal defense lawyer and former prosecutor, been on both sides, Vinu Varghese. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So listen, before we get into you know some of the testimony, yesterday Vlad and I were talking about the uh, judge in this case. Turns out that you actually know him quite well. I do. So you know, how do you think he's handling this high-profile case? I think uh, Judge Brian Kogan. I don't think there could be any better judge to handle this kind of case than Judge Kogan. I have had I did two trials in front of him. Had another major federal hearing. He's the kind of guy who isn't beholden to the government. He was not a former federal prosecutor, as most federal judges are. Mm. He was actually a George W. Bush appointee. Uh, but he is, comes from a civil background. And the U.S. attorneys, he's not super popular with the U.S. attorney's office there because he's compassionate. He's the compassionate conservative that mm. uh, Republicans once uh, talked about. Mm. Uh, and he's known not to go along with things. And so... Uh, with, he doesn't rubber stamp things as a lot of uh, federal judges do because they, a lot of these guys go from the, being a, a career prosecutor into the bench and wearing a robe, and he's not like that. So they couldn't be any better person to handle this kind of case. Yeah, one of the things we were talking about yesterday, which was curious, is that uh, El Chapo's wife walked, got into the courtroom Holy with, a, with a phone. Yeah. And, like, I just know what would happen to us if we, even in, like, jury duty, we had a phone with us, then we would be in big trouble with the judge. And in this case, they took the phone away, but they let her continue sitting in. Right. What's your assessment of that? I think Judge Kogan didn't think it was a big deal. Okay. I mean, look, uh, this, these kind of things actually happen. Security, uh, even with, I think the security is more focused with guys with guns walking around right. patrolling the thing than it is with an individual, even though it happens to be her wife. I mean, she's a beauty queen. She can't be, you know, she can't be away from her phone too long. <laughs> oh, is that the case? Oh, okay. okay. Well, then she gets a pass. Um, okay, so let us talk about this, uh, this uh, star witness, Miguel Martinez. Such high security for this guy. You couldn't even sketch him. They were so concerned about him being identified, but clearly people who are in the Sinaloa cartel must have known him and knew who he is. Um, he testified about the wealth that El Chapo had sort of created. Um, how does the jury take what he had to say into consideration? I think they're going to be very much uh, you know, mesmerized by this kind of testimony. I mean, when you hear about right. a private zoo and that he had to take a train to get around his little, uh, his little uh, fortune. You know, Paul Manafort has his ostriches and pythons. You know, El Chapo's got lions and, and tigers on his, on his little range. So I, I think that's going to be very... It, that kind of stuff is going to be very difficult for the defense to overcome. Uh, the, he has, uh, El Chapo has very good lawyers, yeah. uh, and, you know, Jeff Lickman is one of them. And they're painting a picture of a corrupt Mexican government and that El Chapo is basically the fall guy for this. But when you hear stories like that right. about this kind of wealth and, and stuff, and also he has that reputation, it's going to be very difficult. If for you the weren't running the cartel, cartel, how could you afford a private right. train <laughs> and planes and zoo? Except the, the flip side, of course, is that much of this testimony is dated. In other words, these guys so haven't been old. around him yeah. for at least 10 years. Right. So that does give the defense a little bit of breathing room. They could say, well, maybe he was that guy 10 years ago, but he's since cleaned up his act. I mean, it could be as simple as that. Mm. Well, remember, he was in jail. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, the run. if you're the jury, yeah. you're like, how do you know? Because that happened with well, your memory. There's right. a lot of ways a good, you've been a defense lawyer, you've been a prosecutor. There's a lot of good ways a defense attorney could Sure, and, and, and I think that the, the other things that they're going to talk about is trying to independently prove some of this stuff, right? Mm. And Judge Kogan is not going to let them to get into every nitty-gritty detail. Mm. So when the defense challenges and says, what do you have, you know, th that's it, yeah. mm -hmm. basically. And so, you know, if, if they seem more persuasive to the jury, that could sow the seeds of doubt, ultimately. And, you know, his opening statement was very much about how corrupt the Mexican government was, how there were corrupt American officials even, put, put out what you know about the government. And when you hear stories in the past about Secret Service agents, you know, hooking up with prostitutes while across, you know, you may have doubts. And yeah. there could yeah. be, you get one on the jury, that's enough. All right, Vinu Varghese, always great to have you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.